Oh boy, this episode is electric. All right, you guys want to win a free program? Maps OCR, we're going to give it away for free. Here's what you got to do. Leave a comment underneath this video in the first 24 hours that we drop this video. Make it a good comment. If we pick it, you'll win a free Maps OCR program. Also, subscribe to this channel. Turn on notifications so that you know when we drop these episodes because guess what? We give away stuff every time we drop an episode on YouTube. Also, one more thing. We are running a huge sale, helping people getting re get ready for summer. Maps Anabolic is 50% off, and our Shredded Summer Bundle is 50% off. By the way, the Shredded Summer Bundle has Maps Aesthetic, uh, Maps Prime. It's got the Intuitive Nutrition Guide, and I think there's one more program in there. Maps Hit. All that stuff is in that bundle, 50% off. Go check them out. Go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and use the code April Special. All right, enjoy the podcast. All right, when you're ready. Are we ready to roll, Doug? We are. Are you ready to roll? Oh, oh, I don't have a fucking thing. Of course, of course Justin. Justin's Jesus Christ. Wah, wah, wah. Get up. Go get your thing. Come on, guy. Take your time. Nobody's looking out for me. I see. Have that. a seat. <laughs> well, I got to do it myself, too. <laughs> although, although, the hair looks nice, too, buddy. Look nice. at Justin's hair. It is. Fantastical. It? Yeah, it looks like he... Uh, you know when you go, you know when you when you were a kid and you go get your hair cut and then they have those magazines that you get to look at and give you a lollipop. And th they did, huh? They did give you a lollipop. Mm -hmm. That was good. Dum dums. Yeah, I love dum dums. I don't know what you did. You shut it, off one yeah, of my ears, just, there, Justin. Yeah, what happened right there? Did uh, I? Yeah, Some that Justin oh, did. It's back. Oh, good. It it's back. My ears are back. Uh, dum dums was the lollipops that they give out. But anyway, you know the magazines that well, were I like in the, the blue pops. Of course you do. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it, it's good. It has bubble gum in the middle. Well, oh, that's not why you like it. Yeah, um, they're bigger. Obviously, the Dum Dums are small, but Dum Dums got the best flavors. I'm a size queen. Root dumb. Beer. <laughs> what is your yeah, root beer? Is, yeah, root beer. Dumb Dumb. I don't know any other company that makes a root beer flavored lollipop. You know that the mm. uh, the Olipop drink actually reminds me of that. Root it beer does. Flavor. Doesn't it taste oh, just like that? It does. Maybe that's what's on your mind. I, I think was, I think you're onto something there. Yeah, yeah, and the difference is Olipop's good for your gut. That's right. It mm -hmm. is. Yeah, it no, really is. No, no. Dum dums not. Dum not dums good. are a dumb dumb idea. Yeah, they're not. Anyway, you know the magazines that you would read as a kid. Well, not read, but you. And there's like haircut magazines, and they're always like cool. You know, yeah. that's Justin right now. Yeah. Well, you know what I always wanted cool. that they have you ever seen that flat top that had like the fenders. You know, that kind of like went up like this. Did I? That was the <laughs> flat top right? of the 80s and early 90s. I've never seen anybody ever in life rock one of those. Well, PE, really your P, you that. never had a PE teacher? Yeah, dude, but he had like the, the real the, old, like oh, buzzed the one. You know, it was like almost a crew cut. It wasn't like an actual. I feel like Justin, one. you're one of those guys that would carry. Remember those, the comb that you put your middle finger through? Oh, and do this? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> did you have that? <laughs> no, but I did have one in my back pocket. Did you sometimes. have a switchblade comb? Yeah. I knew it. I did. I knew I, it. I, yeah, dude. You okay. Know, I had I had like my cuffed pants and I went through a rockabilly phase. I know you guys probably didn't know that. I guess we yeah. did. We saw the pictures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Like yeah. Sal's Your MySpace belt. still exists. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> dude, <laughs> MySpace doesn't exist it's anymore. Like That's Sal's purple belt. Yeah, my just purple like belt. purple belt. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I went yeah. through a phase. Did you guys know I had a purple belt? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, now that you mention it, yeah. So I had. So check this out, right? So flat tops uh, was like for whatever reason everybody had a flat top back in the day, um, and. Uh, Let's my, bring it back. My cousin went, they, they look too, uh, yeah, no, they, they don't look good anymore, I think. But back in- uh, I think you're wrong. My cousin went to get one, and he told the lady he wanted it real short. Like, no, I want a short, I want a tight, short. He was a kid, he was like 12. Right. They went so short, they started here, they went so short that his head poked out the top a little bit. So <laughs> they did, that? yes, dude, so he had a flat top, but a little bit of his dome stuck out the top. It was the greatest thing ever. <laughs> We went to a family party. I'm like, what happened to your hair, dude? <laughs> what happened? A train wreck. <laughs> he went too head. short on the flat top. Oh man! And he had a little bit of the dome popping out the side. I have I have an interesting one for you guys. What so you, you remember we were talking about um, the the burger den at Denny's? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I I think I mentioned that I get someone DM me when they were actually on. And they're like, oh my goodness. I got another message regarding these, and they're called cloud kitchens. And this is uh, this guy was speculating on this is the future of what uh, we're going to see with kitchens now, where people 
like Denny's will actually lease out their space to other like Brilliant. S- startup stuff. Uh, and so they just use the kitchen and then they get a short order cook. You just like cook whatever. Right. It's on and demand. Because, yeah, because the whole DoorDash, Uber Eats. Is That's going to open up so many opportunities. Isn't that for, interesting? Think mm-hmm. about all the opportunities. You let's, imagine, let's say you're somebody that likes to cook. You really want to maybe own a restaurant, but the cost of opening a restaurant, right. the footprint, the whatever, the capital. But now with DoorDash and with so many people ordering food, all you have to do is lease. So now is this going to elevate like cooks in, instead of the actual restaurant brand? Like so, you you're going to follow certain cooks because they can cook you. Awesome I don't know. Stuff. I didn't think. I didn't think about that. But what I thought right away that I thought I'm already going to look into it because are you going to are you going to do Mexican food? <laughs> no, really. No. What I'm thinking is that think about if you if you actually either bought or leased the. Um, kitchen yourself like a actual commercial kitchen and then you sublease it to all these absolutely i mean it could turn into like a little a little business model yeah because aren't there Mm -hmm. like regulations on the kitchens themselves oh yeah so if one's already set up exactly you got it and that's the expensive part is getting it all certified right you went through that when you were getting ready to get in the meal service oh my god i know i'm so glad i didn't do that wait i didn't know that yeah dude i was gonna get a gym so the concept was basically I would train like a, a small gym where I'd have clients come in, but then on their way out, they could get their meals for the week. And, and I had a chef and everything that was like good at making all these healthy meals and, and prepackaged and all that. And so it was like, I, it sounded like a good idea, but then I was like, you're going to smell all the food and everything while you're working out the entire time. Like there was just a lot of uh, things that I had to consider. Plus the cost of it was just outrageous. Yeah. I think of it like uh, like the t-shirt business. It's just, the margins are terrible. Mm, it's yeah. like you see th- everybody, you see people doing it. Like those are popping up everywhere, right? They're super popular. The whole, uh, you know, like the flex zone meals and all these, yeah. all these mm. companies that are popping up. But man, I mean, they, they sell you those little meals for, you know, six to nine bucks. Mm-hmm. And I mean, you what get are their it, margins like 10%, 15%. Uh, it's not, it's not good at all. I mean, maybe more than 10%, but I, I would say like 30, maybe mm. um, not very much. I mean the meal, and then you figure it's only costing $9. So the meals, $9, your margins are small. And then the actual dollar amount. So the amount of volume that you have to do, that's a tough it's not, business. It's not a, a big profit uh, there. Yeah. So I like the idea of like a la carte, right? So yeah. doing it with something else. Like I, I actually really liked your idea because you're, that wouldn't be your main source of income it would right. be training clients it was accessory yeah. yeah so uh do you know how they got around some of those those i guess laws regulations about kitchens and cooking so there was this app i don't know if it still exists but let's say you know i have a, a place in a popular city san francisco new york city mm-hmm. and i want to make some money off of making people meals but in order to do that i have to list myself as a restaurant i have to pay all these fees, I have to get approved and whatever. And I don't want to do all that. They had an app that you could go on and just eat over people's houses and experience a home cooked yeah. meal. And they would, and you would still uh, make money off of it. It's like one of those uh, the sharing apps or whatever. Yeah, I and brought people this up were doing years this. ago. Yeah. This was going on when we. Is first, that still happening? Uh, as far as I know, I don't know anybody that's done it r- recently, but I forget the name of it. Uh, but it's yeah, it's just like those sharing, and it's been going for at least four or five years. It's really, really smart. If you like to cook for other people and you can get like a really, really good meal for a reasonable price. No, I think it's a, I think it's a really, and you want to meet people and make friends or whatever. Yeah. It seems like a fun idea. Speaking of food, uh, I know this episode drops on, uh, the national weed holiday, right? Isn't it 420 (laughs) or whatever? That's today. By the way, shame we're sober. Did did we ever, I know. Did we ever figure out cloud in here, by the way, why it was named 420? What was the legend? No, there's a, there's, isn't it just off of like some, like, like um, some officer's code. Grateful for- Dead. There's been a lot of things that have been speculated on. No proof of it. I've yeah. never seen any like real, real proof, but you talk. Like we to- got a 420 over here. Like, I don't know if that was like code for them, like busting somebody with uh, paraphernalia. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's never been so close to being uh, legalized federally. I mean, they're actually talking about it right now, maybe passing some regulations or whatever that allow it to be federally legal. This oh, is really? wild. Yes, dude. I mean, look how many states have now legalized well, it, not just New medically, York was but- a big one, right? Yeah, it's recreational in, mm-hmm. in a lot of these places. Do you know how crazy this is for someone like us, for guys like us, where I, 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 I remember the days where you had a joint in the car, a cop oh. drives by, you are shitting your pants. No difference between that and like cocaine or whatever. It, it, was, a big, it. it was a big deal, but yeah. now it's like not that big of a deal. And then of course, all the studies on the- Benefits and all that stuff with the, all the other cannabinoids. Uh, you have companies like Ned, 
which is uh, hemp oil, which is now you could, of course, sell. But when you get these full extracts of hemp oil, you're getting a lot of the other cannabinoids. You take a good dose of that and you feel, now it's not like smoking a joint, but you feel, you really feel it. You actually take it and you feel it. And that's totally legal. 100%. Speaking of drugs, did you guys watch that documentary on Amazon, The Bodies? It was called Bodies, The Body, Body, Body Lies? Something body. with body. Yeah. Do you remember? What, can you look it up for me, Doug? It's on Amazon. Is that the one you showed us? A yes. Little bit? Yeah. That was crazy. Yes. That, that was crazy. The numbers on that are insane. And that's, it's, this is a, ever since, so Obama passed something that- This was in the Affordable Care Act. Yeah. You, do you know it? Because explain it. You're better at remembering stuff. So, like this so according, it was based off what I saw, because I only watched about 40 minutes. The Affordable Care Act made it so that employers or insurance, I should say, covered uh, drug- um, like drug body, treatment body brokers. Yeah. So, like, if you if you're addicted to drugs or whatever, you need treatment for alcoholism, whatever. Insurance yeah, now covers this. Called body brokers. Um, insurance covers this. So the way it works, and this is what's crazy. So this particular documentary was part dramatized, right? So yeah. it starts off, and these two kids are drug addicts, very very sad, and they run into this guy, and he's like, "Look, I used to be in your same shoes. Um, I can help you out. Whatever." The guy is interested. He gets. He flies to this uh, drug treatment center in California, right, on the beach. Yeah. He gets his drug treatment all covered, mm -hmm. all paid for, because there's this, apparently there's this loophole where they can have another insurance company pay for it. Then, to keep them there, because the success rate's less than 10%, to keep them there, because this guy who's a broker, right, who's finding people to send to these treatment centers, he makes a cut. Then they start paying a percentage of their cut to these people to just keep going through I love drug the, treatment. I, I love this. This is such a scam. It's crazy. Yeah. Oh, the, the documentary, I, well, that's what I love, by the way. I don't want to get you know, make that clear that I don't think, I think this is a good thing. I think it's a really bad thing. And I think it's, and I also think it's what gives uh, capitalism a really bad name because here's an example of it looks like capitalism because all these people are starting up these these homes or whatever. But if it wasn't for that law that's being passed. That requires these companies to pay or opens up the door for this kind of yeah, shenanigans. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Each patient, is worth three hundred thousand dollars every ninety days. Yeah, yeah, that is insane. And the and here's a crazier, even crazier stat that came up in the show. And they were showing how many of these facilities were popping up like everywhere, e exploding everywhere. It's like just a, it's in a LA, it was insane, bro. It's a cash cow. Mm -hmm. It's like if you open one up, you're guaranteed to get a bunch of money from either the state or these companies that are required to pay for. Oh, it's, yeah, it's a no brainer. Yeah, no, it's it, you know they. I think they said the success rate is less than ten percent. So 90 something plus percent of these people are just coming back. And that's how they they that's what was really shady about all of it is it was this hustle to, you know, they go through the whole 90 day process and they're billing, you know, they're billing mm. insurance companies, you know, three hundred thousand dollars for all the amenities and yeah. things they give them. And then they kick them out, you know, oh, you're done with your yeah. 90 day, you're sober now, knowing that ninety plus percent of those people are coming they're right back. Come right back and, and receive the same and, treatment and the whole thing all over again just to get paid. Well, not only that, but they're incentivized because then they pay them. Mm -hmm. Hey, if you come back, I you know I make whatever twenty thousand. I'll give you ten thousand dollars. So now you're living for free in this place that feeds you whatever. You're on the beach, mm -hmm. and you're getting paid to do it. Uh, so it's like now, were you guys aware? Of, I see what what blew me away was that I was completely unaware of this as a hustle. I have no, I had no yeah, idea I it existed. Know. I didn't know. Yeah, I had no idea. That was that was so fascinating about it, and it's been going on now for what? How many years now? It, Almost uh, eight, yep. eight, eight years. I just something? remember all those shows were happening at the same time, right? The celebrity rehab, and then all these like rehab like reality shows were were going on at the same time. I'm wondering if that's you know another way that they're trying to market uh, their facility. Well, you know, it's my okay, so. So from based off what I've read, the, the the these protocols on getting people off of drugs, off of you know being addicted, is it's all a lot of them focus on the physical withdrawal and physical addiction. So in other words, they bring you in, they detox you, you talk to a counselor, whatever. But here's the problem: whatever got you to do those drugs in the first place. If you don't fix that, that's why the success rate's so terrible. Mm -hmm. If you're not fixing the, the, that you have shitty relationships with people or that you have this, this type of depression 
or whatever, you feel, you know, you have this horrible self-image, that's still with you. And if you don't figure out a more effective, meaningful way of dealing with that, that's more this effective than drugs. This is a similar drugs. issue that we deal with obesity. Mm -hmm. it's, the same, it's the same thing. And all these gimmicks and stuff that, that pop up to get these quick fixes and, and give people all this emotion that, oh, they're working so hard and doing this, completely ignoring what got them in that situation in the first place. And it's why we continue to see the, the turnover on people. They, we don't, we all, they, no problem, right? We, we don't have a problem with losing weight. It's keeping it off every year. You know, millions of people lose hundreds and thousands of pounds total. Right. right? But what ends up happening is they put it right back on because they never address the root cause. Yeah. Whatever the feelings are that you have that drive you and they can range, right? The, the feelings can range from anxiety to depression to, you know, even just bad relationships with happiness, maybe elation or impulsive behaviors, whatever. If you're, if those feelings, the roots of those feelings aren't dealt with and you don't find a substitute or a way to deal with them other than the food, then what ends up happening is you just feel terrible. So mm -hmm. yeah, you've lost weight. Motivation's gone now. You did it. You lost 30 pounds. You lost 50 pounds, whatever. Now you're in this place. You're actually back where you were before just maybe a lighter version of yourself, but now you still feel those feelings right. and now you have to deal with those feelings. And the way I dealt with those feelings before was with food. Now I don't have any tools. What do I do? I got these feelings. Again. Oh, I don't know what to do. And you there's only substitute it with something. And, and you, there's only so long that you can muster it out or have the discipline or whatever you want to call it. Not even discipline because that's a skill, but rather the, the, you know, just, just kind of, you know, trading through it. At some point you end up, you know, giving in. That's why it's very important to, to do it the right way, to find the right relationships with these things and find ways of, of dealing with it. Otherwise, it's just it's, it's this hamster wheel cycle yeah. that you end up getting, you know, getting stuck in. Yeah. Anyway, I read something really cool. You guys want, you want some tech news, some cool tech Ooh, news? Throw it down. So in, I got to see where this was. I think it was in Shanghai. Um, let me look up. I have the picture here. While you're looking up tech stuff, there is uh, Amazon. Have you guys seen Halo yet? No. Oh, what is that? Oh, pull it up, Doug. I just just hit me a commercial, so I haven't. So you know, uh, I didn't do a lot of digging yet, so I don't know a lot about it. But this is Amazon's new fitness weight loss tool. So mm. they what does they, it do? So it's is it a tracker, or yeah, it's a 3D. So it's sick. It actually looks pretty cool. So it looks like it shoots your uh, an, an image of you and then tracks. Your, go Amazon. Hey, yeah, there it is, right there. The 3D scan. Oh, so basically our idea a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. no, it's, that's why I thought you would. I thought maybe you. They would, stole it. Yeah, this is very similar to what Justin and I. I would, do you still have those original? I have those renderings. Yeah. Do you really? Uh huh. Oh, it'd be fun to share that if you yeah, could share that with the audience. I think maybe I'll give that to Andrew and he'll put it. Alongside yeah, that would that. be yeah. cool because we did it so long ago, and the, you see Amazon just show you how brilliant Justin and I are. Yeah. So I mean, Amazon. We're just way ahead of the, the curve. So you get this. It does all these measurements. It says it measures sleep, activity, body composition, tone of voice, which is very interesting. Mm. It makes it a, an image of you, a 3D image of you, yeah. and it shows you what's happening. You know, this is this is okay. I, I hate to sound like the you know it's not going to work, but it, this it doesn't address the real problem at all. You got okay, great. You got more information. Yeah. Uh, what's how so is that going to help people? That I, are I have a different feeling about stuff like this than I do like when we got into the heated discussion about like uh, tonal, yeah, tonal and OTF and stuff. This type of thing I, I like, right? So I, the, I love where this is at. Like, I mean, we we all remember when we first started. Like, you had books and it was all a notepad and 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 long form trying to figure out all these things. Right. Everything um, was numbers or, you know, you're trying to get through and get all these like real tangible metrics. At least this is like a visual metric. Yeah, but I feel like this is going to be valuable to the people who would be willing to do that, who are willing to write things down and track things. I agree. I, I don't think it's going to help. I mean, again, I don't I don't yeah. I don't think it's the answer, but I do think that we're getting closer and closer to helping the average person. I mean, do you guys not think that uh, Fitbit, Fitbit, My Fitness Pal, and, and Fat Secret, those types of apps are not useful tools? I find them extremely useful. I yeah. do. I think they're useful tools, but I think that they're we're still it's focusing on that twenty percent of people who are gonna use things and want awareness. Yeah, but I, yes and no, right? Because uh, you're, you're I, I'm agreeing with you that it's not addressing again the what got these people here, right? right. There's the, the, it's not the magic pill. It's not revolutionary. It's not anything like that. But as a as a tool to help a person get to that place or a coach to use that with 
the client, I think it's brilliant. And for I think a it's coach, extreme, Jack, I, I think I it's extremely that. useful. Yeah, that's a good point. If it's combined with a good coach, yeah, I mean, yeah. now it's yeah. because look at okay, we know that again, my fitness pal and you know, fat secret and tools like the uh, Fitbit, these tools, okay, are are not that great as far as solving the obesity update, mm -hmm. but. I mean, how much do you guys like those tools as coaches? I mean, I use them like crazy. Well, I could see that you, if you have access to it and your client's wearing this thing, you could yeah. watch them. Well, that's the thing. I, I like the sensor aspect of it that uh, maybe they don't have to check in all the time, but you as a coach can can see their progress mm -hmm. and alter just little things to help them, you know, get closer towards, you know, the right path. I think that something like this with a visual is very helpful sometimes for people that uh, they they need that self awareness that they're not really like looking for certain things like how that's going to affect their body and yeah. they don't really like understand it all completely if you just show something a little more simplified that's like a visual I think it does help yeah how's, but if you're working with a coach that's the that's the money of course yeah that's the money uh, it's like the therapy because now the coach up. has got a tool plus you're working with a real person yeah and they're kind of guiding you the whole time so speaking of the tech that I was bringing up Doug I texted a picture of you uh, to you uh, maybe you could pull it up. Up. So in Shanghai, they displayed a QR code in the sky and people could scan it and then look at the ad. So there's literally a picture. I don't know if Doug could pull it up. So on on your way out to my place, I don't know if you guys saw this, but I saw that on a, a billboard. So it was on the billboard. Yeah, it's huge on Just the billboard. Oh no, this is this is in the sky. Well, I know that's even cooler. This is in the but sky. Same concept though, right? You yes. get it and then it gives you the ad. What? Yeah. yeah, oh yeah. No, Doug's gonna pull it up here. But literally it was they displayed it like uh, like a hologram. There it is. Can you see that in the middle? That that QR oh my code, God. So just in the sky. So literally, you you just look up and oh, what what's the that? Hell? And you scan it, and boom, it tells you what the hell's going on. That was in Shanghai. Wow, how insane is that, dude? So that okay, I wasn't gonna bring this up, but this is definitely goes right in line with my theory for all the alien, the the UFO oh. sightings, all this stuff. <laughs> oh, okay. I so can't wait brace to yourself. <laughs> okay, this brace yourself. In. Yeah, because. Okay, so we're getting all these actual visuals that uh, where it's it doesn't make any sense about how fast it moves. All of a sudden, it's right. over here. You know, like it defies like all the gravitational forces, all the all the physics yes. and everything else, right? So, you know, what does that the best like that you can think of? Like ju just in what we know, QR codes here. No, oh. light. Oh, uh, okay. Right. So if I have a if I have a flashlight. Right, yeah. and I just I move it really quickly like that. Yeah, like it looks just like what these UFOs movements are like. Right. So my thought is that it's more like a hologram. It's more something that they're projecting, you know, just out to there. Fuck with us. Yeah, just to fuck with us. Mm. That well, could actually be. I mean, legit. I mean, I'm trying to keep bring it back into tangible things that we already know. That could very that, easily it's like magician bullshit. That, that could easily fool us. Yeah, that could totally easily fool us. I like speaking this, of which I like this theory. Speaking of which, I hate to say it, but we all know Alex Jones, right? Ah, uh, you know the frogs or whatever. I don't like them putting chemicals in the water that turn the friggin' frogs gay. Do you understand that? Ugh, ugh, serious crap. Yeah, Alex Jones, right? Conspiracy theory guy. Okay. Yeah. Fuck, he was right again, dude. Did you hear what they did? <laughs> no, oh, no. What, 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 did you what? hear what they did? No, no. They freaking made this is human the human monkey oh, I did embryos. See chimera embryos. Yeah. They took humans. Was this just in China? Or? This was in I think the US. In the US? I think so. They took humans and, the, and monkeys and, the and made a freaking cross between the two embryo. And the justification is this is so they can take organs from that and use as right? justification is they can see if they could do it. I think yeah. that's what they're. I know, they're really but what the, I saw that article. Right, it was they were talking about that, and that was the that's the purpose of this, right? Yeah, no, it's right here. Uh, researchers have inject. Here we go. Have they not this. seen Planet of the Apes? I mean, it's it's so obvious. But no, this is investigators in China and the United United States. Oh, isn't that great? When we Whoa. work together. We do crazy shit, Good. right? Yeah, yeah, let's learn from their look, science. Look what it says. Researchers have injected human stem cells into primate embryos and were able to grow chimeric embryos for a significant period of time, up to 20 days. They grew an embryo for almost a month that was a monkey-human embryo. And you know who was talking about this about, I don't know, eight years ago? Yeah. And everybody made fun of him? Yep. Alex Jones. Yeah. That dude, are you kidding me? So uh, explain to me why why only twenty days? Like why didn't they keep going? What was it? Was oh, it I'm sure. A, I'm sure after a certain point, they're like, we better stop, <laughs> otherwise we'll definitely get some heat. But that's what they told us. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't make one last. Just some little mutant creature. Yeah, <laughs> we want a human with monkey strength. 
you oh know, what I mean, or, or whatever. Yeah, or we, we, wanna... we do not need that. No, we don't. No, I, I, there's scary. no justification for that. No, and it, this again, I, I, I'm telling you, it's a bunch of scientists, and they're really smart and bored, and they're like, "Let's, oh, what can we do?" Do you yeah. see that's a joint U.S. U.S. scientist team? Mm. Interesting. Oh, Gi- oh, China U.S. scientist team. Yeah. 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 When, when well, chi- let's keep doing amoral science. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude. Let's do it. Yeah. Well, I'm waiting for the, the team. I'm waiting for the monkey. You know, army. Yeah. Unstoppable. Well, since we're talking about animals, I have something for you guys that, uh, and and it's also 420, so I have homework for you guys to smoke some weed tonight okay. or okay. tomorrow. Done. Check. Done. And do you guys have an Apple TV? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So have you seen, um, I think it's called After Dark. It's like, it's basically uh, like- Yeah, the uh, Jason Momoa, is that that one? No, no, oh, no, that's no. C. Never no, mind. no. This is like uh, Apple TV's version of uh, the Discovery Channel, like the whole animal planet and everything Oh, this like is, that. yes, dude. This is when uh, well, everything look, is dark and then you look at the animals. Yeah, the so they have these, oh, they have these, low, they have these low light cameras mm-hmm. that allow you to view all these animals at nighttime. And we've never been able to do that, to, this clearly, right? So it actually, the low light cameras show- all in color mm. at nighttime, super wild, and we're watching all this, all these. So you got high and watched this? Oh yeah, yeah. so good. It yeah. kind of freaks you out because there's so much activity. At yeah, night and we're like just sleeping, just. Dude, you we're know, the, like the, jaguars the, are ready to kill us. Yeah, the first one they followed around uh, a, a pack of lions, and they were like, "Man, we we knew that they were active at night. They didn't realize how active they were at night until this this whole show." They have incredible vision uh, in at night. We're we're blind at night compared to some of these animals. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's why we go to sleep in caves. Yeah, you know what I mean. We yeah. got to go and hide ourselves. If you guys haven't watched it, it's 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 worth a watch even sober. But mm. I think you know, with the holiday here and everything, well, and just, yeah, I feel dude, like. Yeah. I got to tell you guys a hilarious story this morning. So I, you guys know I have a, my daughter's 11. She's about to turn 12, uh, you know, this year. And uh, so she's she's starting to act a little bit more like a teenager. What does that mean? Well, it means that when she wakes up in the morning, you don't know what you're going to get. You're going to get happy girl or are you going to get moody as fuck girl? Who knows, right? <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, so it's a bit of a, a, a bit of a toss up. Anyway, this morning was a uh, moody girl. So she woke up, uh, you know, angry. Hey, honey, do you, would you like some breakfast? And she answers me literally by grunting. Mm. Like, I don't know what the hell that means. <laughs> okay, you get nothing or whatever. So we're doing this whole dance all morning, right, where she's kind of moody. And I'm like, whatever, have your space. You know, that's fine. No big deal. We get in the car, and she's like, she's got her, I mean, she looks like she needs another 10 hours of sleep. She's like this. We get in the car, and my phone automatically syncs up to my car when I turn on the car. Now, this morning- Oh, God. This morning, I worked out at 5.30 a.m., and I lifted- uh, Okay. I so. had to train hard <laughs> and heavy. This could have been really bad. Oh, no. I had to train hard <laughs> and heavy and you know, to, to motivate myself, but whatever. So I get in the car, and th- I did not know this, but my music, my, the, the stereo was on, and it was on loud, mm. and I had Sepultura. Nice. Ju- bro, we pull out of the garage, and she's mm. like- mm. And then the music just all of a sudden, oh. da, 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 yeah. da. <laughs> that'll that'll shake out oh any kind of uh, you know funk. Bro, the that look, somebody's in. the look on her face, dude. I was like, "Good morning." <laughs> oh my god, how how pissed was she? Oh, she was so bad, dude. Oh it was so god. funny, so dude. Good. Speaking of kids, so yeah. okay, um, the <laughs> I don't know uh, who you, who you guys are in your relationship uh, with Katrina and I. I'm the one who like is always encouraging Max to like. Run naked and free. Like let him be. Let him be naked. He wants to be naked. Let him run around. She's like, no, no. She's like, put a diaper on him. Put a diaper on him. And so when you know this weekend he was pretty much mostly with me, right? So yeah, anytime. I, this is when dad breaks the rules, right? So mom's got all these strict rules about nudity and everything like that. Not too much. Like it's not that she won't let him be naked. I'm like, let him roam for as long as he wants to, and then eventually, especially if he's like somewhere like outside and whatever, yeah. whatever right? So this is like an ongoing thing. Well. She's laying down this weekend and I've got him and, you know, I just, he just went to the bathroom. So I changed his diaper and as soon as I take it off, he he shot up to run around and I'm letting him kind of run around. So that, so he's in the, he's (laughs) He's he's laughing. He's yeah, he's, yeah, he is. He's laughing. He's having a blast because he knows he doesn't get to do this in the house very often. And he's in the, in the living room. So I walk around the corner to uh, throw away the diaper and the diaper genie. And I come walking back and literally he's like this, he's got, he's got one hand on his hip. 
<laughs> he's, he's, he's just, just taking a he's, piss. He's just pissing on the floor, dude. I'm like, oh, oh, no, dude. of course you did, dude. Of course you do that. Well, I was in your camp. I you know. know you're gonna ruin it. I know. Yeah. I know. I was like, God damn it. Max. Now, did you tell Katrina? Or is she gonna find out from the? Podcast? I told her. I told her. So, because I, I, of course, she's right. Right. So we're, we're good about telling each other when the other ones are. Right. I was like, all right. It's a good right. thing it wasn't a poop. I just uh, well, oh, yeah. he just had went. So I'm like, what are the chances he's gonna go again right now? He just went right. So I should be good. <laughs> well, you know how it is when you change your diaper, like. Uh, what something about the air? It just triggers more. I pee guess every but, time. I mean, the, I just died though. The stance and everything. He's got a hand on his hip, and he's just like, <laughs> like know? an old man. Yeah, just <laughs> just pissing all over my carpet. Just taking a whiz. Yeah, no my kids deal. still take a tree and just pee outside all the yeah. time. I can't stop them. <laughs> yeah, just, don't like, just like please, you. just you know, don't let anybody. See I'm sure you. you're the one that I do them. too. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so how far I'm, can I'm right out there with him? My buddy's my buddy's kid did that, and he he was learning how to like make letters and stuff, and so he goes through. Yeah. He goes around the corner and his kid is trying to draw with his pee in the carpet. He's like, oh no, <laughs> mom's going to kill us all. Oh, you know? no. yeah, yeah. I love that. Yeah. So that's good. That, that, so you, there, there's definitely things that he gets to do with you that he doesn't get to do with mom and oh, vice yeah. versa. What about her? Does she have him do stuff that you? Uh, I mean, I think Katrina's probably, and here's the thing, and I, and I tell her that, like, because we don't, we don't disagree on those things. It's just like, you know, I, I, I told her the other day she, he was doing something that, Again, okay, so here's another one, right? The, he, I'm watching him. Katrina has, you know, he's built, she's built the structure. Like he, this is what time he eats. This is what time he naps. This is what time we bathe. This is like when he's with dad, you know, we kind of break those rules. Mm -hmm. Now, it, what I tell her is that, you know, it's, this is me getting to have fun with him and just letting him be loose. I would never not want her to run the show like that. Like, mm -hmm. I love that he's... And you're not trying to undermine her. Totally not. Yeah. No, it's not like that. I'm just a little more free with him. Like, so I, like he's with me. I It's time to eat, and we're, like, playing, and I'm, like, feeding him why we play. Versus she's like, okay, it's time to have lunch. Mm -hmm. Let's sit down. And she gets him his high chair, and it's like an event, which I appreciate and love, but then, you know, I, I break some of those rules. So I'm probably mm -hmm. the one who breaks the rules or does things that he's that he, that she probably wouldn't agree with mm -hmm. um i don't think she is you'd have to ask her that if there's something that she does she's that, gonna tell you yeah. yeah i know i don't know i'm trying to think right now what are there certain things well, courtney that, usually takes them to like uh, eat at places i would never go you uh, know whenever we're gone especially like the treat thing like taking them to, to get ice cream where i never do that like i feel bad but i'm like never do it. i never even think of that i always tend to take them places that are dangerous you know like <laughs> I, i'll let them go climb on these trees that are way too tall and they go like way up there and i and until I, all of a sudden i get nervous because at the very top hey dad check me out i'm like oh my god get down <laughs> oh my god how did this happen that's you hilarious. know i just let it happen so yeah, yeah that that's one thing I, I tend to like flirt a little bit more with uh, you know having them really go for Dude, it, yeah. I think it's good, right, to have the, the the a little bit like that. So long as it's not, um, it, it's it's not if you're not undermining the other person, it's totally fine. Right, because mom and dad or whatever or parents, there's there's different personalities. The kid will get something from each. You can't be the exact same. That doesn't make any sense. There's got to be a little bit, you know, gas and brakes if you if you want to call it balance. Right, you know that makes sense. Yeah, uh, the the baby, he. Is because we kiss him a lot. We're a very touchy feely family, right? Yeah. So everybody's hugging, and kissing all the time. So I, he tries to do to kiss. He doesn't know how. Yeah. But he goes up to Jessica and he opens his mouth and just puts his mouth on her face, or he'll like, yeah. like you know, whatever, right? And he just <laughs> he just loves doing it. Doesn't do it to me because I got the beard. But yesterday it was warm outside, so I went for a walk with him and I'm holding him or whatever, and I had my shirt off. Some people still kiss like that. Just, <laughs> just, <laughs> yes. like, What's wrong with those people? Yeah, it's weird. So I'm holding him and I have my shirt off. And I can see that he wants to, and then he kind of feels out my shoulders like bear. Mm -hmm. So then he does this. He goes, he goes like this to my shoulder, and he goes, and then he goes. <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't taste good. It doesn't taste like mom at yeah. all. Dad's skin is not like mama's skin. They got a hair in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it was hilarious. The, the face he made was like, oh, that's not the same as yeah. mom. <laughs> Mom's the good one. She's the delicious one. She smells good. <laughs> you don't want to try to kiss my bear skin. It doesn't. No, it doesn't taste good. No. Anyway, um, Justin, that. Uh, article you sent that study you sent yes. me over the weekend yeah. really really cool Isn't it fast well, yeah. you said him and not me yeah huh? you don't like this kind it of it was stuff. about uh, <laughs> grips uh and the benefits cognitive benefits of grip training uh, yes no what they were doing it's not the ones that you've talked about because you've talked about this for a no minute. this is another one and what they're showing actually this obviously this we've talked about this before but not the study but we've talked about how if you're at work one of the best things you could do to increase your cognitive performance 
is move, get up and and do some kind of exercise. Trigger sessions, like we talk about in Maps Anabolic. I noticed mm-hmm. that. When I would mm-hmm. do trigger sessions throughout the day, I was my performance at work, my mental performance was much better. If I felt a little tired, go do a five minute, you know, trigger session with bands or whatever, and I come back and I'd be sharp. Well, anyway, in this study, all they did was have people squeeze their grip. Mm -hmm. So they would take a gripper, they'd squeeze their grip for a little bit, and they tested their cognitive performance. They were faster, they they retained memory uh, much better, so they had much better memory retention, um, better verbal fluency. So ba- based off of just doing the gripper or if they were high on that, what I mean, what's the so, consistency of using it? Oh, yeah. Just, okay, got it. So just by so them- compared to people who didn't do that, the people who did some just a you know, minor physical exertion had better cognitive performance. What alignment. was the uh, the duration of it? Was it like right away or was it over weeks of consistently doing Right away. It? Mm-hmm. Oh, right, right away. Right away. And they link it oh, to the, interesting. It's the central nervous system, your yeah. CNS. You're yeah. turning it on. It's going to fire more effectively in, you know, what's a big part of your now, CNS w- is your brain. I wonder how much, if that's um, similar to, if if you could, con- okay, say, let's just say somebody did uh, just the hand gripper, right, for that those purposes. Mm-hmm. But then you had somebody else who strength trained, like mm-hmm. traditional squatting, mm-hmm. deadlifting, things like that. If you would get a similar response from that. I would imagine, but I'm, I, I would also imagine there's a, at some point there's diminishing returns, right? If you mm-hmm. exhaust the shit out of yourself, you're probably not going to get that boost. Yeah. So really what you're doing is you're not getting a crazy workout is you're, you're just turning the I would, CNS on. Yeah. I would associate a little bit more with isometric training. Like that would be sort of another like good pair for something to get those types of benefits, which is really what brought me to that study because mm-hmm. one of my friends, Ryan Glatt, he does, uh, like all brain training and all cognitive performance uh, type of, of training. And so he was actually experimenting with Axon for a while for me. And he sent me that, that article. And there's been a few about isometric training in general because of that fact that you don't get like super fatigued from it, but you are training your central nervous system. And so you get a lot of cognitive benefits as a, as oh, a result. You could test this out yourself. If you're, if you ever get to the point where you're at school, you're at work and you just feel like, Oh my God, I'm, I'm getting tired. Or I feel like my brain is stuck. Tense up your whole body for 15 seconds. Just try that. Just squeeze your whole body for 10 to 15 seconds. Relax. Immediately, you'll notice a little boost in cognitive performance just from doing you know something like that. Now, wow. speak, speaking of workouts, I know we we there was a recent uh, Q&A episode where we were talking about going to failure, and we typically advise people don't go to failure. Mm-hmm. But I think the occasional, occasional, uh, dare I say rare use of failure can be beneficial. So I've been uh, doing this. I'll do this once, maybe twice a year with my training. So what I do essentially, because I've had people DM me and say, okay, can you highlight when this might be beneficial or why? It's So here's how I do it. I take my total training volume and I cut it down by two thirds. So I take it way down, right? So if I'm going to do nine sets for a body part, now I'm only doing three and the three sets are to failure. And typically I'll pick three different exercises. I do this for a very short period four weeks or so, what I noticed from it are a couple different things. One, and this is the bigger benefit, believe it or not, is it helps me recalibrate uh, my understanding of what failure is for myself. Because here's what I notice: When I do this once or twice a year, when I'm doing a hard, especially a hard exercise like squats or, or overhead presses, when I think I only have two reps left- Sometimes you have more. I actually I usually have four to five. Because yeah, yeah. now I'm actually training to failure. Mm. So what it does, it helps me recalibrate my, you know, my, my intensity gauge. Oh, I thought I only had two, Mm -hmm. but I actually did four or five more reps. So that's number one. then number two, in that short period of time, the reduced volume, increased intensity, I always notice I get a little bit of gains, you know, from doing something like that. So I think it's something. Well, that's interesting because you, that's not very often at all. I thought, uh, so I'm like once a month, I would say I'm there. Is that too frequent? You think I, I don't do it that much because Failure gives me some benefits, but boy, does it last a short period of time, and then it's yeah, gone. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then I don't get any more. Benefits. I mean, I think that I think the the real message is to not get because what happens is you you train to failure, you see new PRs and new numbers, and then you get mm-hmm. hooked in that right of mm-hmm. wanting to keep doing it. So, you know, I typically would do it once once a month just to do exactly what you said, just to kind of see where I'm at. Like if I was, making, especially if I'm making good progress, right? If I'm training and dieting really consistently. Like I like mm-hmm. to kind of remeasure, kind of see where I'm at like once a month and then, you know, so I'm recalibrated for the, the following month. Yeah. So like instead of doing three exercises, for example, for chest and all three of them, I'm doing three working sets. I'm doing the same three exercises 
one working set each, and it's that one set uh, mm. to failure. So mm -hmm. the volume is way down. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but so you I just I, focus on the intensity. That yes, way. yes. Um, that's, again, speaking of training, I showed Justin this. I have to give this Instagram page a shout out. It's one of the best ones I found in a long time. Jailhouse Strong. Yeah. What a great bunch Instagram. of badasses on there! Really? Oh, bro, oh, yeah. it, 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 this page uh, they highlight like well, maybe Doug could pull it up. It's on Instagram. It's uh, called Jailhouse Strong. I think is the name of it. They will show like old school strength athletes from all over the world. There's this one post uh, of these these strength athletes from India in mm -hmm. the 1800s. Mm -hmm. You know these wrestlers. Um, they were showing like yeah. See, look at, least, look at some of these pictures. Yeah. Oh, look at one of Mike Tyson's neck. Yeah. The, you know how big his neck was? It was something like 20 inches, 20 inches or around. Yeah. It was ridiculous. Wow. Yeah, scroll down. Keep scrolling down, Doug. I want to show... There's a picture He's of a, a guy tank. named Don Youngblood, who's probably the most alpha-looking picture I've ever seen in my entire life. And believe me, <laughs> as soon as he hits it... <laughs> yeah, dude with the hairy chest. Oh, yeah. yeah no, keep keep oh, scrolling yeah. down. because uh, Right there. there right yeah. Bro, bro, look at this guy. <laughs> is that not the most alpha thing you've ever seen in your entire life? Yeah. <laughs> what is that right there? <laughs> he, he's just like a bouncer, dude. You yeah. Know, yeah. You, you show up to pick up your girl and that's her dad hey how you doing <laughs> like, oh, i'm leave yeah oops. how big is that dude he uh, looks huge i don't know but i 22 22 inch is he neck is that a neck what says 22 inch yeah 22 inch neck wow yeah, tyson's 20 is big 22 inch neck is insane yeah dude. Yeah, yeah yeah but wow. that whole he just looks like he could just crush you in a million pieces yeah the whole page has got great stuff and there was one there was one recent one maybe if doug you scroll up to the top of this uh the further down this Japanese guy, like fighter, I think he was, and that right there. Look at what he's doing right there. Part of his training, Is he's he literally wrestling a bull. He's literally wrestling a bull and taking him <laughs> what down. What the hell? <laughs> yeah, dude. You know what's funny? So I was with my dad over the weekend, and I was showing him this website because he loves this kind of stuff. He loves like old school strength stuff. Yeah. And I was telling him like, man, I can't believe like the younger generation how weak they are. And my dad laughs, and I'm like, "What's mm -hmm. so funny?" He goes, mm -hmm. "You guys are weak compared to my generation." <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh, I'm like, you're 100 percent right." I yeah. said, "What about you compared to your dad and your grandfather?" He goes, mm -hmm. "We were weak." Mm -hmm. He goes, "This is the trend." Yeah. He goes, "We get smarter, but we down, get down, 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 but we get much weaker." And I was like, "Oh yeah, I guess you're right." So wow. I don't know what my grandkids wow. are going to be doing. Can <laughs> we uh, can we transition over to some controversy? Let's do it. Because I feel like mm. Doug was like, "You guys haven't said any controversy. Throw some in there, Doug, please." Doug was really we exactly need, what we I said. Yeah. We need controversy. <laughs> music. Please don't come we? in with the heat. Don't we no. need some music for that? So I didn't know. Um, I didn't know this. I don't know when it was. I, I think it was our our friend Connor. I think I saw him talking about this, and I wanted to ask you, Sal, if you knew anything about. He's it. drinking special protein shakes. No, oh, God, no, I no. Saw that post oh no, I didn't see that. So it, that's uh, what the generations do. The secret ingredient is gin. Nancy yeah. Pelosi investing in Microsoft. Did you know about that? Dude, there's a lot of stuff about her investing in companies right before yeah. some kind of new law regulation. Information. So she in, she went, didn't just invest a little bit. She invested $10 million with her husband Come into on. Microsoft literally like weeks before Microsoft announces its deal with the Pentagon. Yeah. It's like a $22 billion deal. Do you know how many what's times- What's going to happen to her? No. Do you know how many times she's done that? She's done that with many, many things where she'll invest and then, oh, we got a government contract. Oh, we got this new thing yeah. that's coming out. How is that not insider trading? It, of it, course it, it is. 100% is. Of course it is, dude. But you got to go after them yeah. to, to prove that. Good wow. luck. And here's the deal. If you're, okay, so let's say we're is all- Is it really that hard to prove somebody that's tied into the no, government gets a government deal? No, it's not hard to prove. How? Oh, here you go. Look at all these companies that she that she did. Wow, there's that many? Yeah. Whoa. So look- She did Roblox too? Yeah, all right. Okay. So imagine this, right? We're we're all politicians in the- And you're, you guys are, you're a Republican. I'm a Democrat. He's a, you know, whatever. We're not in the same party. We don't really care. But all of us make money like this. Am I going to rat you out? No, mm, because yeah. if I do, oh, right. I ain't going to, this is how, this so is we'll why throw the heat right back bro, on you. This is why you have these lifetime politicians. First of all, look up the pay. I, anybody. Yeah, watch, they, only, they only make like a hundred, they don't make $200,000 no, a year dude. max. Look, they're, okay. They're public servants. Look, look it up. If you don't believe me, if you're watching or listening to this podcast, look up how much you make. If you're in Congress, you don't make shit. Not even the president makes a lot. The president's salary is $400,000 a year, which you're the president of the U.S. Yeah. You make four hundred grand. That's insulting. nothing for that, right? These people make less than two hundred grand a year, yet they live in D.C., one of the most expensive places in the world. And yet you have- yeah, there it is right there. Yeah. Yet you have some of these. There you go. So senators and house, house representatives, 174 grand, right? Look at that. I mean, now, 
and yet you have some of these lifetime politicians who are worth millions and millions of dollars. Mm, That's weird. Yeah. How'd they get all that we all that money? Yeah. A lot of it's this I kind of weird. If the shit. Koch brothers were behind it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So yeah. I know, man. That's so dirty, dude. I know, dude. If you look at like um you, you know the train that they were going to build here in the California? What was that? The high speed, high speed rail? To, yeah, the one that's cost. I don't know how much it's cost now. That never. Are has, they still even working on it? Because on, they just like to spend money. Bro, look, look into the con. Look into who got the who got the contract and see who they're related to, and then mm-hmm. you start to to realize why this passed. And who who's making money off of it? Wasn't Elon? Uh, isn't Elon Musk trying to do that? Wasn't he trying to do? He's trying to do a hyperloop. Yeah, oh. and also like a vacuum tunnel somehow. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't know. Whatever. Speaking that of was. Elon Musk, Doug, you, can you share what that article you sent over? I don't know if these boys read it or not. You sent over an article on Tesla. Uh, Two guys were killed with they drove. They, oh, self driving the self drive mode or whatever. Yeah. Nobody so, was so they driving. were in the car, but they were on self-driving mode. Yeah. So two two older gentlemen got in the car. I believe they said bye to their wives that they were going to go. They were in. They, this was the intent. Was that one guy was in the passenger seat, one was in the back seat, and they said they're going to go test out this thing. And they, yeah, yeah what they said they're, was they told their wives, "Hey, we have information on Epstein and the Clintons," and then it's weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's so strange that that got happened. derailed. Speaking of crazy, uh, the the. Was it Jake Paul? And uh, oh my God, I didn't even. I can't believe I didn't bring that up wow. yet. I can't believe I didn't bring that up yet, bro. I just saw the highlights. Didn't, so you guys didn't, didn't pay for the fight. Okay, so you guys did. John Pascal and get my money, Jake. Get my money. Didn't pay for the fight, right? No, no, I did. Okay, so I paid for it. I tuned in at six o'clock. Okay. So I'm still learning all this. So I'm this all, is so different from what I've heard. It's unbelievably different. So the, I, if I get this correct, right, and you check me in my DMs if I'm wrong, uh, Thriller is the name of the the company or the promotion that okay. is putting all this stuff on. If I if I got that right, mm. and this is not the first time they have other other fight promotions. I had to download a, a, an app. I think called Fight Club is what I had to download in order to buy this. I couldn't buy it through. The, I mean, you could if you have a smart TV and download the app, but right. it's not like- on but you the, have to get the app. Yeah, it wasn't on a normal provider like most pay-per-view. So I had to go through this app to do that. Mm. They, I mean, they got a ton of money behind this thing. I mean, they're Snoop Dogg, Ice Cube, Ice T, um, Supermodels, Mario Lopez. I mean, they had- they had all the and didn't you say there was like a slap boxing? So they, <laughs> so, yeah. So they, well, they never seen that. We just blast each other in the yeah, face. Oh yeah. yeah. So that's okay. That, this is what's interesting to me, right? It's I don't know. Like obviously, they're trying to steal some money from you know regular old school boxing promotions, right? To get mm-hmm. some of the eyes, right? I think Jake Paul and uh, Ben Askren did like one point three million pay per view buys. Yeah, that mm-hmm. which by the way ties uh, what's his name Conor McGregor, McGregor yeah. and Mayweather. Yeah, right? dude. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, so- and, and and of course we know what happened. The fight Askren got knocked out, which I mean Askren's a terrible boxer, but that really looks bad. Yeah, for MMA. Well, it it does kind of right. Not I mean, to people who know fighting, because you know fighting, you know Ben Askren's terrible. Uh, yeah, that boxer. was total mismatch, but still, it doesn't matter though. Yeah, I don't know how much. Okay, so I don't know how much effort he really put into training for it. Like I didn't follow the whole training. I know he did like some funny videos of Rocky, yeah. like he did like like had some fun with he it. He didn't look like he was doing much boxing specific training. Not only that, he didn't look in great shape either. Yeah. He had like the he back ne- fat roll going on. Still, he never and, really does, and it, he's never looked in great shape. No. I I get that right, so that, that's not a, a true test if if he did or didn't. But he just didn't seem like he cared that much. They did this thing where they actually went behind uh, the behind the scenes, like in the locker room before the fight even happened. They were kind of interviewing mm-hmm. and talking to him. I mean, he was he was making fun of the organization, just like how unprofessional and terrible it was <laughs> that he wouldn't even let his kids watch it or anything. So yeah. he was kind of shitting on it, the whole thing, and he was kind of like laughing about this whole process. So. I think he knew he was getting a massive payday. He mm-hmm. didn't really care. Mm-hmm. Now, there's a lot of people that are speculating saying that he took a dive. I that was not a dive. No, I don't think no. he took a dive. No, 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 no. That was not it. He uh, went he, to sleep, bro. He put him to sleep and then he got up. And, and when he, he was wa- he was oh, yeah. he was out on you, his feet. He, yeah, he you could see he was trying to stay in it. If you were if you were throwing the fight, you would have just mm-hmm. stayed out. Okay, was- so so I think there's a market for it, for this. I don't think it'll ever replace uh like real th- good fighting. I think there's always a market. and you, you know how you know because you see this in other countries. In fact, I sent you guys a video from Russia. Russia has weird fights. They have fights with people wearing medieval armor and hitting yeah. each other with swords. They had one with this really massive overweight man fighting this girl. 
Um, when one, they have, you know, like they have all kinds of crazy it's stuff. It's just like carnival kind of yes. like, you know, it's, it's along those lines of like, okay, this is, this is all for entertainment, but it's just like, you know, you don't, you don't know what to expect. So uh, I, to me, it's not, it's not like, uh, you're watching it for the sport of it. You're watching it for but, the freak but show. But dude, okay. with that much money though, yeah, okay. this thing is going to keep that's, going. Okay. So that's, so here's what I, I think might happen. Now think about, uh, kind of a page out of our own book, right? We came out with some really terrible early on content, like shock and awe. Like if we go back, right? If you go back, how hard is it for you guys to listen to this? something in the first hundred episodes? Mm -hmm. Bejazzled. It was, yeah, it was bad, right? And so maybe that this whole slap boxing, you know, billionaire fights, you know, some other dude who stole his girlfriend, you know, <laughs> Jake Paul, <laughs> YouTuber of. fights, a MMA. Maybe all of that is to just get the, the attention on them of like mm. this weird drama. And then with that money and those eyes, maybe they try and elevate their game as far as how, how the commentary is and they bring more professional. I mean, because Snoop Dogg was getting people high, bro. On Dude. TV, mm -hmm. I was like, it's, is, "It's the Jerry Springer of boxing, right?" That's yeah. what it is right there's now. There's a market for it. Yeah. There's, there's definitely a market for well, it. Obviously, 1.3 million pay per view buys. Also, by the way, I got something. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring it back to something controversial. You're welcome, Doug. Uh, <laughs> you got people saying it's not fair that a guy like Jake Paul, who's not a professional fighter, makes far more money than most professional fighters. That's not fair. He's never trained, whatever. He created it. Doesn't matter. The market said that he's he's making that much because that many buys. Same reason why women's basketball, for example, won't, won't make as much money as men's basketball. As unfair as it sounds, they just don't bring in the money. That's where it all boils well, down to. Life isn't fair. That's it. So if you if you want what you think is fair to make a lot of money, then give your attention and money to that. Don't give your money attention to the stuff you don't think is fair that has that Did kind you of money. see all the heat that Tony Jeff Jeffries got from it? No, Our what? buddy at Box and Burn, he uh -huh. was, you know, because he's com he's been commenting on it and talking about it, mm -hmm. and he has kind of the same attitude as we do. It's ah, it's fun, you yeah. know, whatever. Like, obviously, he's not like a real, real serious boxer, and, you know, it was entertaining, and he liked it, but because he was saying positive things, and he has a community of all, like, hardcore real boxers. Of course. Oh, yeah. Boy, he took a lot of heat. The from purists and everybody. Yeah. yeah. I mean, because there is. There's a lot of people that, and I, I understand, right? So I don't, I don't want to, like, I totally, how much would that sting, right? You've been busting your ass for 10 years to work up, you know, work up to the professional level as a, a, level as a boxer. Yeah. Nobody really knows who you are. Here's the deal. You make a decision. Do you want to be the best boxer or do you want to make the most money? Mm -hmm. And sometimes you could do both, but sometimes you do one or the other. Mm -hmm. And if you're boring, you're not entertaining, you're not going to make the most money. If you're very entertaining, like extremely entertaining, and people want to see you fight, even if you suck, you're going to make a lot of money. Yeah. And that's just the way, just yeah. the way it works. Now, here's the deal. I would hate to be... As smart as they are media-wise, I would hate to be those brothers, the Paul brothers, because they have such a big target on themselves. Because now, all you need to do to get a fight with them is to make enough, create enough of a social media beef that people want to see you get your ass kicked or see you kick their ass. Because, oh, yeah. yeah, I'm sure really good fighters be like, I'll fight him, you know, mm -hmm. I'll fight him. And he's like, I'm not going to fight you. Nobody cares if I fight, you know, a really, really good fighter. But some fighter who, like... You know, dates his ex wife right. or starts harassing harasses him. Harasses yeah. If they do enough of oh, that, they definitely open the door for that right. to happen to him. Well, that's that's, right. that's what I think is going to happen with this promote. Now, I don't know if that's the initial move and then pivot into actually being a direct competitor to like boxing, mm -hmm. or this is they're just going to there. They've obviously found. A, a need in the market because people are spending money to watch stuff and maybe they just stay in that lane. Maybe it's just all drama fights. Maybe yeah. it's not about this is the best boxer in the world, but you want to see that dude kick that dude's ass and so we're going to put it together and then you're going to pay money to see it. That's definitely happening. I mean, it's it's here. I don't think it's going away anytime soon, but it was terrible. Yeah. Oh, it was painful. Was it cringeworthy? Oh, it was so cringeworthy to listen to the guys and, and Oscar De La Hoya came on there and he seemed really? like he, Yeah, just... Wow. It was so uh, the guys that were doing the interviewing uh, for the fighters and things like that. Did, they didn't have any sort of fighting knowledge at all. It was they just try and throw they threw celebrities and names. In Circus. There. I think Justin said it best. Yeah, yeah. it was just uh, you know, bro. But, Pride did this in Japan. Now Pride also had good fighters, but they would do stuff like this where they'd have you know the, a giant versus a little guy or whatever. Like 
there's some entertainment value, but if you push it too hard, in my opinion, at some point, you're just kind of like, oh, this is gratuitous. Oh, mm-hmm. it was, I mean, it's crazy the amount of money. I mean, that kind of money, they're going to, it's going to, it's not going to go away. You're going to see it again for sure. Hey, I hope you're enjoying the podcast. Real quick, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our free guides. We have fat loss guides, muscle building guides. We even have guides for personal trainers. Again, it's mindpumpfree.com. All right, enjoy the rest of the podcast. First question is from Kiki Murphy 13. What are some ways you can deal with the inevitable constant stress that is causing hormonal imbalances even when you eat right, exercise, and get adequate sleep? All right, well, there's, there's your Ned commercial. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Actually, that's no, that's not that's that's very true. There are yeah. things you can use some that'll aids. help balance out or, or help your body deal with stress. Uh, I know we work with a company called Ned that makes hemp oil extract. It's actually the one of the only ones I actually feel when I take it. And that can help. There's supplements like ashwagandha. Ashwagandha can also help. But here's the here's the here are the big rocks. Here's the big thing that's going to help. Now this person asked the question and they mentioned eating right, exercise and sleep. And then they said I have a lot of stress essentially that's causing hormonal imbalances. Well, here's the beauty of a fit and healthy lifestyle. Use it like a tool to optimize your life, whatever's happening in your life. So what does that mean? If your life has a lot of stress at the moment, then you can modify your nutrition, your exercise, and your sleep to help your body deal with that stress. So if you're very stressed out, that means you're probably going to want to sleep more. Your workouts are going to be more focused on mobility, flexibility, feeling good. Your diet is going to be uh, you know, higher in foods that are nourishing and healthy to the gut, to your digestive system into the body. Let's say your let's say your life is low stress at the moment. Things are going great. Well, now you can push your workouts. You can push the sleep a little bit and get away with a little less sleep. You can push the diet in bulk or cut aggressively because the rest of your life is allowing for that. So, this is how you want to view those things, you know. I've I've gone through periods of my life where they were very very stressful. I'm not going to the gym trying to hit PRs. I'm not going to the gym trying to you know, go beast mode. When I go into the gym, when I'm stressed out, I'm thinking to myself, what can I do to help my body deal with the stress that I'm dealing with mm-hmm. at the moment? It usually looks like mobility, lighter movement, flow type movement, things where I'm kind of making myself feel better. I also think there's a lot of value in scheduling like days that are, and and whatever it is that you, you use to decompress. So whether you're yoga, meditation, you read, go by the ocean, go to the mountains, get a massage, like- um, this is something that Katrina really hacked in with me uh, early on in our relationship was I, I can get really, really uh, focused on the business and work. And, mm. and even though I love what I do, uh, it can become stressful because you got a lot of, a lot of moving parts. Right. And, uh, and I can always, I, I put myself off, you know, oh, I'll eventually get to the massage or I'll eventually mm-hmm. take a vacation. I'll do that where she, she knows me so well that she can feel that coming on even before I think I can feel it coming on. And so she will actually in the calendar will already put like, we're going away. Phones are going away. We're going to go stay at our favorite place by the ocean and do things like that. Or are she just, in fact, this was just what, two, two weeks ago. Um, I came home on Friday and we had, you know, a a massage therapist at the house ready for me to go. And I didn't even know that I was going to have a massage. So she'll do things like that to help me decompress, even if I'm not like saying, oh, I'm all stressed out. So I think um, either having a a person who can support you and do that with you or you making a conscious effort to like kind of look at your calendar ahead of time and go, okay, I need to every so many weeks. And it doesn't have to be expensive. It either. can actually just be open space, right? I know. I know. I said things that are probably expensive, like staying at a, a nice hotel on the beach or doing a massage. It, it doesn't have to be that. It could literally be like just go for like a long walk somewhere in nature that you really like. Whatever. Just you know, having it though on the on the books that you're going to go do this, and the intent is for you to really kind of let go of all the outside mm-hmm. distractions and be present with yourself. Well, one thing that uh, kind of came to mind for me that I know. Uh, really helped a lot too was, um, and I've told some of my clients to kind of do this and to jot down and make a list of of things potentially that were stressing you out. And so having some sort of like an inventory, uh, you know, of stress, but, but really for me, it was, it was about eliminating a lot of like the chaos, a lot of the chaos, uh, chaotic elements. So uh, ways that I could get ahead, uh, you know, in work, or I could, I could accomplish things in, in a timely manner and, and address things when I need to address them instead of put them off. That actually like 
like was increasing a lot of the stress uh, that would accumulate and I would carry that with me like uh, throughout the rest of the week. And so to to be better about like what Adam's saying in terms of like scheduling myself. Yeah, if I schedule that I'm going to have this day where I'm going to uh, I'm going to walk, I'm going to I'm going to get all these types of like de-stressing type activities. Um, I I have to be able to have this one window to really hammer out all the the, the needs to, and to get it done. You just reminded me of something else too, Justin, that, you know, sometimes the things that cause like this low level stress or even sometimes high level stress is something that you're not addressing and it just keeps resurfacing. And so I've talked before about like how I used to train myself to be better at self-awareness at, at nighttime. I used to lay in bed and kind of go back in my day and think of all the, the moments that were ups and downs, or in this case, we're talking about stress. So talking about the times that were, I was frustrated or irritated or stressed out, I would go deeper into why I felt that way. Sometimes um, it's because you have something uh, underlining that is not, that you're not dealing with. And so it's, it's surfacing as, as like work stress or daily life stress. And working and practicing on self-awareness was one of the things that helped me get to the bottom of that. So for example, you're going through your day and you feel all stressed out at work. Well, what was it exactly that happened at work that made you feel quote unquote stressed out and then unpacking that and being like, well, why does that bother me? Or why is that? Yeah, maybe it's because I'm insecure about exactly. the thing or whatever. And, and in fact, 99% of the time, that's exactly what I'd find out, Sal, is that like there was a, a deeper rooted insecurity or fear that I had in my life that was surfacing as mm -hmm. stress at work or stress in a relationship or stress in other, other places, but that wasn't really the root cause of the stress it was because i kept bearing it and then it would it would emerge in other parts yeah, by so. the way oftentimes mm -hmm. that comes out in physical ways too right so oftentimes if you're not dealing with some kind of uh, emotional stress and you're just kind of bearing it it can it can look like pain back mm -hmm. pain injuries yeah um, you'll often see this. You'll hear a massage therapist talk about this where they'll work on someone, they'll find a tender area, they'll push it and yeah. work on it, and then the person will get this emotion right. or they'll start crying. They're just or trapping they're, it in a place in their body. They're trapping it somewhere in the body. This actually legit can happen. Yeah. So here's my protocol with stress. So I'm going to give you a little bit more specifics. Here's what I do. I don't go on a cut and I don't go on a bulk. I don't go on a cut because, well, my body's under a lot of stress. Uh, uh, cutting your calories below maintenance is an additional stress. I don't want to add a stress. I also don't want to bulk because I know when I'm stressed, if I try to bulk, that turns into garbage food. It turns into heavily processed food, which isn't going to benefit me. So I tend to eat around maintenance. And I also focus on foods that are very easy, easy to digest for me. Mm -hmm. For me, that looks like meats, fishes, no fried foods. If I do eat carbohydrates, it's, it's rice. If I do eat vegetables, they're very well cooked so that they're pre-digested. Why? Stress for me affects my gut, it does this for a lot of people. So I focus on that. With my workouts, my intensity is at 50%. I'm doing full range of motion stuff. I'm doing more stretching. I'm taking my time in my workouts. Sleep, with sleep, I'm paying more attention to the two hours before I go to bed. Blue light blocking glasses. I'm trying to bring my body down. Some I might mellow. take I might take, you know, uh, Ned sleep or some melatonin. Do that before I go to bed to get better sleep. When I do those things, my body's far more resilient to the stress that's happening in my life. When I don't have that stress, then I can push the bulk, the cut, the hard workouts, and less sleep. But if I'm not doing, if I have a lot of stress, I got to optimize those. And that's why I said, use them as tools, modify them to optimize your life. Next question is from Lewis Lifts a Little. How do you handle your mindset after coming back from an injury? I strained my lower back a couple weeks ago. I know what I did and didn't do that led to the strain. I also know how to heal it and it's healed. Now I just need to heal my mindset. Every time I get to 300 plus pounds for my squat, I start to psych myself out. I complete a couple sets and I then get into my own head and stop before I hit my set goal for the day. I think Adam could answer this. He's had a few injuries last <laughs> yeah. couple years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, here's the thing too. Like um, this idea that we always have to be increasing the amount of weight. I mean, squatting 300 pounds is is phenomenal. I mean, that's for anybody, right? I know there's all kinds of stuff on the internet of this makes you consider you a really strong person or kind of strong. It's a like 300 pound squats. Good. Yeah. Yeah, it's if, legit. yeah, exactly. If you can, if you can squat 300 pounds uh, up until you're, you know, late sixties or seventies for oh the rest God, of your life, you're, you're great. Yeah. You're that's phenomenal. So 
this idea that we always have to progress back or further or add more weight to the bar, I, I think that's myth. And that's something that I had to get out of my head is that, you know, I am, I'm, I'm wanting to, of course, I want to see progress and I want to add more and I want to add more. And I have to check that sometimes and go like, why though? Like why? So I could tell the guys, yo, I hit 405 today. Like, what's the real point of it? Like, is it, I'm not competing anymore. You know what I'm saying? Like, is it going to enhance and improve my life anymore? No, not really. So I think this, this idea of always having to push more weight to prove to whoever or whatever that you're, you're progressing or you're doing great. I think it's silly and you got to let go of that. I, I think that's the first key to healing a mindset like this is the idea that you have to keep pushing beyond that. There's nothing wrong with you sticking out of weight right. and realizing that, wow, here, here so your weight is that, right? So mine is 400. Like when I start going over 400, shit happens because I'm, I'm, I'm pushing it towards my peak of what I can lift at. And all it takes is me to be, you know, a little off that day or not have the energy and strength that I thought I had going into it. And it puts me at a higher risk. So the higher you go, the higher the risk is. Sure, the potential higher reward may be, but what what do you really need that right. reward? Now, now, I do get what he's saying, though, in terms of... So what Adam's saying is that that's the core. That's the core root. Like, that's something everybody, I think, should work on. But I do understand what he's saying in terms of the mindset, because if you've ever injured yourself doing something, let's say you're riding your bike mm -hmm. and you fall off and you twist something or you play basketball and do There's something. some hesitancy before you go perform it again. You get the fear, yeah. right? There's a little bit of fear. Oh my God, I remember last time I went to do this and boy, did I hurt myself really bad. So I totally understand that. Here's how you get around any fear. You have to desensitize yourself to that movement. Now, what that and that's a slow process. So if you get fearful at 300 pounds, get really good at squatting 250, like really, really good, like perfect, tight, slow form. Get to the point where you could pause at the bottom, mm -hmm. pause halfway up, get really good at it, and then add 10 pounds. Then get really good at 260. Slowly get yourself back up to where you were before, but own it, completely own it, and get really, really good at it each and every single step of the way. And what happens is you'll desensitize yourself yeah to the squat and then you'll get over that fear. This is also where I like to to load the bar and just hold it and feel the weight. Uh, and I know like, uh, I remember, I think you brought that up beforehand when, when you're starting to squat and the guys would just load, well, you need to feel was, the weight. That was Adam. That was Adam. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I, I honestly feel like that, that provides a, you know, a valuable uh, feedback mm -hmm. that, that you can control this. You can stabilize in this position. You could feel that all the way down your body. It's not going to crush you. Uh, and, and so if it's a fear thing, I think the exposure in the different components of the lift, uh, will really help, uh, kind of break through that. Yeah. I like that idea too. And like, so something you can do along, like uh, set the, the squat or the safety bars up, right. Yeah. Oh, I was just and, exactly. and actually, you know, add 50 pounds over what you could probably do and, and just put it down and yeah, just go just down, sit down, just slow. go as slow as you can. Right. Mm -hmm. And just, but you know, just control you're not, it. yeah, your goal is not to come in, back out of it. In it's fact, that, set it down that highlights something is learning how to dump the bar. That's a skill, yeah. actually. A lot of people don't know how to do it properly or they're afraid and they've never done it before. And then when they get pinned, they don't know how to dump the bar properly and then they get hurt. That's actually something you, you should practice. Get a bar on your back and figure and learn how to dump the bar and also learn when to dump the bar. Like there's a point where you're grinding a weight up and you're better off just dropping the weight. You maybe we'll get it up if you try to grind it out, but you'll probably hurt yourself. Like you start to learn where that point is, like ah, and you're like, this isn't it, and then you know, and that's, then you're comfortable dropping. That's how it I mean. You mm -hmm. guys have probably seen me dump the bar more than anybody. Yeah, here. Yeah. I always, I and a lot of times you could have, I, I could have got it out, but I already feel the breakdown a little bit, and if I feel the breakdown even in the slightest bit, I'm dumping the yeah, bar. It's not worth it. it. Yeah, I know it's funny. That's like when I got rid of all training partners. Like I was like, it, because <laughs> the last time I relied on a training partner, they fucked up, you yeah. know, and like I almost got really hurt, and it's just like it's so much easier to just dump the bar and, and 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 do that yourself. Oh, you're right, dude. Like imagine if I, this has happened to me too where I'm up pin I'm under a bar and I want to dump it but my my partner is behind me trying to help me. Yeah. So I got to grind it out with the person behind yeah. me. I can't dump it. So I would definitely recommend like what you said Adam, set the safeties, practice that feeling. Once you're comfortable failing, then you're probably not going to be as fearful of the bar. Next question is from that guy KC. 
How do you improve grip strength? Oh, oh Justin, and I, Justin and I aren't grip. qualified to answer yeah. this. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, somebody had a second pass at it, uh, which was interesting. Too. No, yeah. I didn't have a second. It was one time. <laughs> that was twice, dude. Oh, because at the first time oh, I, I pulled oh, it because out. because weird, yeah. I had like 180 <laughs> on the strongest you want, man. You want to do it again? Yeah, yeah, I do. Let's do it. <laughs> Bring it. All right, so here's the deal with, with grip strength. So just like anything else, you could obviously uh, train it. Um, and so I would say, here's the number one thing, train it like any other body part. So you have your normal workouts, you hit your chest twice a week, you hit your shoulders twice a week or three days a week, work your grip, uh, two or three days a week. And there's a few very simple exercises you could do. Now you can work on the static strength of your grip, which is just how long you can hold something. And that's quite easy. You can literally stand holding a pair of heavy dumbbells mm. and hold them in uh, either as long as you can, or, maybe five seconds before you think you're going to drop it. That's probably a little better. You don't want to necessarily go to failure. So that's one way you can hold it. But there's also varying degrees of static strength, meaning um, you know, there's a, there's a bar, there's that circumference, mm -hmm. but you also want to build strength on things that are thicker. So what I like to do, sometimes I'll wrap a towel around a bar so that it's a thicker grip. Now I'm holding it. Or I'll pinch grip where I'll hold a plate mm -hmm. just like this with my hands and hold that for grip. So that's for the static strength. What about actual eccentric and concentric strength? Well, you can get yourself a hand gripper to do that, or you could use a barbell or dumbbells where you put it behind your back, you let it roll down you the can fingertips. You get a rice bucket. And then you squeeze it. Or, yeah, I love the rice Which bucket exercise. Which is great. Yeah, you can like push your fingers through, spread them apart. You can grip uh, the you know the rice and, and make balls out of it and squeeze as hard as you can. Um, and it's just one of those underrated exercises. Not a lot of people know. We have that in our OCR program. It's I, awesome. I think it's really interesting to, I mean, unless you had something like OCR. So I'm glad you just actually said that because I was actually going to say it's you know this whole idea of like training grip by itself. I'm less of a fan of it because there's so many exercises that you can do that your your grip strength is going to come up really well. I mean, you doing weighted pull-ups is going to do it. You doing heavy deadlifts is going to do it. You yeah. doing farmer mm -hmm. carries is mm -hmm. going to do it. You using an axle bar for your deadlifts is going to do it. Like these these all those exercises are other great exercises for other parts or, or your the whole body that I think have tremendous value and you're going to get a lot of good grip strength from it. To sit down and do like wrist curl bucket and the only way i'm doing that is if i'm specifically training for right. like ocr where that needs to be at another well level. it's specific too to what you train so you're going to be as strong you're only going to be strong in your grip to what you're constantly doing yeah. right so it's like the novelty of it is cool and all but like for the most part it's it's like you said it's what you do constantly and it's just getting better at your uh, mechanics your performance of that and loading the weight now along those lines i've, I've noticed this quite a bit with clients that i've trained where I, i've done a little bit of work on their grip and on their wrist and because they feel so much stronger and more stable in their hands, more stability. they're stronger on their presses, they're stronger on their rows because they just feel so much stronger in their grip. Even in their presses, even I tell you what, uh, you see some guys do this well, they're, where they're heavy benchers and they're really strong with their bench and because their wrist and their grip isn't strong enough to support it, they'll have wrist wraps yep. that literally go around the wrist and it allows them to bench press more weight so you would be surprised. Now, you guys are pretty advanced. You guys train a pretty heavy. But you should be surprised the average person, a little bit of grip training, and they notice these tremendous benefits. And really, okay, here's what it boils down to. Our hands connect us to the world. We evolved using our hands a lot with things. If you ever shake the hand of a, of a blue-collar worker, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's a different species. People today, we work on computer. We never challenge our hands at all. And mm -hmm. because this connects us to the world, we become super weak. So then they go to the gym, they train their body, and their grip is just strong enough to hold on to the bar and do their exercises. A little bit of grip work for the average person, I think, uh, can, can make a pretty big difference. Kung Fu grip. Next question is from Jazz Fitness. I'd love to hear you discuss the recent debate on range of motion. Oh, oh this wow. is the, the is this a, okay? We're we're extending this from because obviously we did a whole episode. Yeah, I was going to say we did a whole episode. What more do you want to hear? Yeah, yeah, there was a whole episode. I mean, really, the debate was is a fuller range of motion beneficial when compared to a partial range of motion when it comes to building muscle. And the argument goes with the partial range of motion argument is you're able to keep more tension on the target muscle. Once you go outside of a certain range of motion, tension is taken off the muscle. Our argument is you should be able to maintain tension on your target muscle intrinsically throughout the full range of motion. And training a full range of motion is going to give you a broader strength range because your strength is relatively specific and studies show that muscles that work through larger ranges of motion 
they build more anyways. And what you don't train, you lose. So if you train a partial range of motion, you start to lose a strength and mobility. So the prerequisites are, can you control that range of motion? Do you have good stability and good connection? If you do, within those parameters, train the fullest range of motion possible. Don't go outside of that. If you have no control, stability, or strength outside of that range of motion, your goal should be to increase that range so you can train in greater and greater range well, of motion. Well, and in addition to that, even if the other guy that we were having this debate with was completely right, because uh, there's there's some truth to what he was saying. No doubt that if all your goal was to develop the quads – and you know, once you get out of that range of motion in a really deep squat, the less of the quads are being activated, and tension is going elsewhere to other muscles that are going to support that. Even if if uh, we were to to you know agree and go that direction, would you want to do that and to sacrifice though the the uh, mobility work that it takes for your hips and ankles to get all the way down? Would you at at any age of your life? want to just write that off if i told you that by doing that by shortening your range of motion up for years uh, very much so, yeah. so will probably it's lead to limit your function that's right lead to hip and back and knee pain because you you decided to shorten your range of motion up in pursuit of building more muscle in your quads so even if his case was completely right and we were completely wrong you know would you want to do that that was the problem that i had with that statement in that debate was Okay, maybe a very small percentage of you know high high level bodybuilders uh, want to train specifically in that range of motion for a while to get a little bit more development in their quads, and they don't want any more hamstring or glute or calf work at all. They just want more quads because it's lagging. There's some value to that statement, but pretty much everybody else, I think the statement is more harmful than it is helpful. Yeah, but also along those lines, as a bodybuilder, there's one thing that you do better than any other strength athlete, and that is connect mind muscle to target muscles. That's what bodybuilders do phenomenally. So if you're telling me that you lose tension in your quads, right. when you go down below a certain point, like figure out, you can figure it out. Like connect to the, trust me, the quads aren't turning off. Yeah. Unless you're relaxing at the bottom or you have well, poor mobility. The other problem is like it's like there's just too much isolation focus. Yeah. And, and you, know, it, you know, in general, we try so hard to, to you know, promote the, the value of compound lifts and like what that does. Is it's such a louder systemic signal uh, throughout your body that everything has to respond. This is a whole new environment we have to account for. Uh, and so to eliminate that as part of the training process is, is pretty ridiculous because it is going to affect – all the muscles involved with that movement uh, tremendously and you can isolate it and you can sculpt and you can yeah. do all that stuff. But to, to remove that from the conversation is pretty stupid. You know, it's funny. We did a whole, literally a whole targeted episode on this. If you want to know more, you know, I'm sure it'll be linked here and you can go check it out. But the comments underneath that particular episode, every single person who heard us talk, they, I saw so many experiences of people saying my knees used to hurt. My back used to hurt. Then I worked on mobility. I'm doing deeper squats. All the pain is gone. My shoulders used to hurt. Then I worked on mobility. Now I'm doing full range of motion shoulder presses, right. and my shoulder pain is gone. Like the whole, that old mentality of, oh, it hurts your knees if you go too low. Oh, it hurts your shoulders if you go too deep. That's actually not entirely correct. The truth mm -hmm. is your mobility is making you hurt. You fix that. Then the full range of motion stuff will reduce pain not add pain. Right. So even regardless if your argument is purely on aesthetics and like muscle development, like you like play that out. What does that end up with? Like where what is your body going to function like? like and then what, what kind you of lose? pain do you have? And what then, do you lose? And then you lose yeah, your aesthetics. So risk versus reward. Well, yeah. you end up like me. That's I mean, that's why I think I was so passionate about this argument was because I agreed with that guy. You know, 22 year old me agreed was would quickly agree with that guy because all I cared about was the way I looked and I was young and I didn't like squatting because I wasn't good at it. And so I just said, oh, cool. Good excuse for me not to ever pursue getting better at squatting because I can actually develop my quads, which was the main thing I cared about at that time. Oh, cool. I'll just stop doing that completely. What I didn't know was going to happen to me was because I did that, I had terrible hip and ankle mobility. And so chronic low back pain and hip pain came in my late 30s or my mid 30s. And I was like, well, I can't figure out what's going on with me. Oh, that's why. Because I decided that I would just shorten my range of motion up on my squatting because I didn't need to develop. I wanted to develop my quads. That was my main focus. But now I'm, I'm stuck with this low back pain and hip pain. And it took me a year and a half, two years of reversing that by all the mobility work. And the beauty of it is after all that work to get to that place, now all I have to do to keep that from happening 
is squatting deep. That's it. That's all I have to do. And now I, I'm my hips and my back are fine. That's it. Look, if you like this podcast, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com. We got a lot of free guides that can help you for with everything from fat loss to muscle gain. We even have guides for personal trainers. Again, it's mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So you can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. Imagine if the goal was to be the best soccer player on the field or the best baseball player on the field or the best basketball player on the court. You would not go and practice your techniques with full intensity all the time. That wouldn't make you the best. You would practice the technique. And then occasionally... You'd go hard. You play a game.